Hi, welcome to this video lecture. So today in this video, I would like to present to you history of tribology. So tribology, as we know, is a science and technology of interacting surfaces. And tribology involves friction, wear and lubrication. The knowledge we have today has been developed over many, many thousands of years. Let us look at how as a civilization, as a human civilization, we have understood about friction, wear and lubrication all put together as tribology. So how did the ancient people solve the problems of friction, wear and lubrication? And as we know, friction, wear and lubrication is primarily involves machines. So what machines did they have? When we talk about friction, this picture comes to our mind many times. So this is how the ancient Egyptians solved this problem of friction. So here you can see that they are moving a colossus, a very, very big statue, almost 58 tons in weight. And many people are pulling with rope. The statue, which is made of a stone, has been put on a sledge and you can see that this person is pouring some liquid in front of this sledge so that there will be a liquid lubrication and it will help to pull this big heavy statue easily. So this is the concept of lubrication that they had understood and they utilize it for their work. So this is going all the way to 1880 BC. But what about other civilizations? There were many other civilizations. They were also solving the problems of tribology in their own way. For example, in Mesopotamia civilization, Sumerian chariots were being used and it was 2500 BC. So in fact, before the Egyptians were using the lubrication method, these kind of machines were being used and these machines were used for war. So that means this was the their biggest war machines which they used to wage war against enemies. So as you can see that this chariot has got many war equipments like arrows here. These wheels are not very clear but most probably the wheels and the axles were integral to each other and this chariot box was somewhere was kept on the axle. The mechanism is not very clear but we can understand that 2500 BC people had already started using chariot. In fact the oldest wheel and axle was found in Jubjana Marse's wheel in Slovenia and this wheel was which is made of wood was carbon dated and it was around 3130 BC so even much before the Sumerians started using chariots but this one was found as two pieces not integrated as wheel and axle system so still we don't know in what situation they had used it but we found this kind of wheel and axle made of wood in Slovenia. Now if we look at some other civilizations, for example Harappa civilization in the valley of River Sin, which was around 2500 to 1700 BCE. They left behind some miniaturized wheel cart and toys. These were made of bronze. So it was a bronze period and this kind of cart which you can see is was being used by human being perhaps for transportation and you can see that it is very functional. The animal pulled cart was very functional in all aspects. So most probably this is a miniaturized version of a bigger cart that was being used in those times. Similarly you can also see some toy looking items which also had wheels and if we look at the details of the wheel 
axle and the mechanism we can find that the wheel and the axle were integral to each other so so they rotated together but the stage was actually put with a, this kind of a bearing now they were using the bearing in the same way that we use today that means the bearing is basically designed to reduce the friction and to concentrate the wear to one one part of the machine so exactly the way we use bearing they were using these simple bearings for their transportation system Other, another thing we notice is that these bearing clips were actually detachable they were attached to another part so these bearings could be removed and replaced so this was a very important development for them because this is exactly the way we use bearings today that bearings can be replaced whereas the the remaining part of the machine can still work so these detachable bearings were plain bearings but they were they could be easily removed because this part of the bearing is actually inserted here so you can remove these bearings and you can replace it with a new one once this bearing wears out whether they were using a lubricant or not is not clear but it is very clear in terms of design that these bearings are replaceable or detachable and this kind of transportation system provided less friction because of smaller contact area but then smaller contact area will also lead to high wear in this localized zone and therefore you can detach this bearing and replace it when this one wears out so this is a very very ingenious approach to transportation and in fact today we are using the same way the bearings that they had designed so we can say that these miniaturized versions were actually in existence they were the real machines that they had used for transportation or perhaps for agriculture but they were actually functional carts or vehicles the other kinds of wheel system we can find in for example in 1342 to 1325 BCE king tutankhamun of egypt also used this kind of chariots so these chariots were quite popular those times especially for war these were very simple chariots but here you can see that the wheel and the axle actually are separate they are not integral to each other so actually the the axle is inserted inside the wheel hub and and the wheel is protected from moving out of the axle by this mechanism so here you can see that the friction will be high and it is possible that the hub of the wheel will wear out so over time you will have to replace the wheel once it wears out again we are not clear about the any lubrication system around the same time or little later the great king ramesses of egypt ramesses 2 used these kind of simple chariots for war purpose and you can see that that it's a spoked wheel with it is not very clear whether the axle and the wheel are integral to each other but chances are that this is a, another version of the same design much later 668 to 631 BCE Assyrians also used chariots now you can see that these chariots are much bigger in size and these are really being used for war purpose and this chariots provide a very good protective place from where the the warrior can actually throw arrows at the enemies and here another thing we can see that the charioteer the person who will drive the chariot is different from the warrior so the warrior can fully focus on war 
while the charioteer actually drives the chariot. So this is a very ingenious design and here you have got more space for people. So this machine was really you being used as a war machine just like we use tank today. So this provides a protective place and the, ch the warrior can fully focus on the war. From the same period we can see another chariots which is much bigger in size you can see that it is taller than the human being and also on top of this wheel we can see some feature and it seems that these features were being used to avoid wear because these wheels were being made of wood and wood will wear out because of its interaction with the soil and stones so therefore these wheels could have been overlaid with a metal surface it could be a bronze at that time so this is another feature that we see which involves tribology that is wear to reduce wear you can coat a surface or you can overlay another material on top of it so that wear can be reduced now some other evidences we can see the chariots were being used in china in the shang and zhou periods 1200 to 800 bc so in china also the developments were taking place in terms of wheel and chariots so these civilizations were being affected by each other so exactly we do not know how it came but but these machines were all using tribology and therefore they were trying to solve the tribological problem by design in india 950 bc was the period of mahabharat so it was a great war in that took place here in india it mentions the strategic use of chariots in texts so we do not have any artifact or relief from this period but there are plenty of texts in which the mention of chariot is given so this is another evidence that in india around 950 bc the chariots were being used for war purpose now let us see some other solutions of tribological problems so assyrians in 721 to 705 bc also had the similar kind of issues as the Egyptians. That means they were trying to move very heavy statues made of stone from one place to another. So in this case you can see the statue has been placed on a stage and this stage most probably made of wood is being pulled just like in the Egyptian case we saw around 1880 BC. But here the solution has been slightly changed. They are not pouring water or any kind of liquid in front but rather they are putting some pieces here and these pieces most probably are wooden pieces and these pieces so this big stage which could have been a wooden stage will move on these wooden pieces the purpose of this putting this wooden piece is so that the stage doesn't have to interact with the soil or sand and therefore it reduces the contact between the two and therefore it reduces friction. So putting these wooden pieces will reduce the friction and therefore pulling this statue will be much easier. Another thing they were using is the lever mechanism. By using the lever mechanism you can push this or rather you can pull the the lower part and therefore you can reduce the contact further and you can reduce the friction so this mechanism was being used and here in this case we can see that the friction was being reduced by reducing the contact area during that time they were using wheeled cart for transportation some other evidences of use of wheeled cart or chariots we can find for example in India at 
after the death of Buddha, which took place in 483 BC, there was a big siege of Kushinagar for Buddha's relics. And these reliefs you can find today um, in one of the temples. And here you can see the use of these chariots with wheel. So around this time, the wheel chariots were very popular for war purpose. So, and therefore they had the issue of friction and wear in these kind of wheel chariots. So therefore design was very, very important and whether they used lubrication or not, it is not very clear at this point. There are some other evidences of use of wheel. For example, in the Aztec of Mexico made children's toy using wheel dating up to 1500 BC. However, these wheels were not used in a functional way for any solving any problem, but these were only as a toy. So with this background, we can see that there are many examples in the ancient time when people had tribological problems. The tribological problems involve friction and wear, but we do not know whether lubrication was used in these machines or not. But we do have evidence that Egyptians used lubrication for moving stones or statues. Now we come to the last part of this uh, history of tribology as far as the ancient technology is concerned. So we have a lot more information from Leonardo da Vinci around 1452-1519-80. He left behind many sketches which indicates that he solved or he tried to study the problem of friction and he tried to find out how he could solve the problem of friction. So here in this case, this is the earliest friction experiment we can find. And here you can see that he used blocks and he pulled the blocks in different orientation to find out how friction was changing. And he might have found out that friction is basically proportional to the weight and it is independent of the contact area or the apparent area as we say. So these are some of the experiments that he conducted and he left behind some sketches. So we can understand from those sketches how he might have studied about friction and actually he went on to solve the problem of friction by rolling element bearing. Just like the bearings we use today, the rolling bearings, uh, ball bearings. Uh, so he also made these wooden balls and he put those wooden balls in this kind of recess and they were used just like the rolling element bearing we use today. So from this time, from Leonardo da Vinci time, actually the travelological problems were being solved using design. Still we do not see that the use of lubricant, but by design you can solve the problem of friction. So this is part of the ancient time when tribological issues were being faced by human beings at different times and how those problems were being solved. We can see that with the development of machines, the tribological issues became very, very important. And in fact, we can see that the decline of chariot for war situation, for war, happened around 1st century AD. And we can think why it happened. Was it because of the problem of friction and wear? That because of wear, the axle and the wheels could not take those kind of tribological situations and therefore people stopped using chariots for war and people started using cavaliers or only horses. So these are again other things that we can think about.